Aston Martin is making huge moves left and right throughout 2024, but all of them seem to be invested for the future of the Silverstone based squad, and whether we like him or not, Lawrence has decided to put his money where his mouth is. After the links of Nui joining the team have strengthened up to a level of us waiting for an official confirmation, just days before the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, Lawrence doesn't plan to stop any time near soon, and things could go as far as him dropping his son from the team and demoting him to another racing category. With the potential that Aston Martin holds in his hands right now, we could see them compete for championships from 2026 onwards, and if so, will it come at the expense of Lawrence's long-standing wish, seeing his son win races and compete for championships? It's safe to say that Lawrence Stroll has been investing tons of resources in Aston Martin in the past couple of months, and that's very likely to bring the expected results in the next couple of years, as everyone on the team is adamant that there isn't much performance to be found on the car right now. The focus is shifted to 2025 with the arrival of Enrico Cardile, the former technical director of Ferrari, as well as Andy Cowell, the former power unit chief in Mercedes. Lawrence has made it known that there's no more playing around, and he's here to win races and championships from 2026 onwards. This is the year when Honda arrives at the door as well, exclusively supplying the English team with their engines, which is a luxury that few other teams can brag along with once the new regulations start. But how is this shaping up to be the greatest environment for a superstar driver like Max Verstappen? Obviously, one of the hottest topics in the Formula 1 world right now is Adrian Newey, and we're very close to receiving a confirmation from Aston Martin that he is the new member of the entirely reconstructed team which Stroll made possible thanks to showing all of the facilities and technical potential of the factories in Silverstone. With the power of Fernando Alonso's persuasion and the fact that Nui would work very close to his home in the UK, it's safe to assume that these were the crucial factors that made the entire deal possible in the first place, as well as the fact that Adrian will have a commanding role in Aston Martin and has distanced himself from the setback role he had in Red Bull, where he was more focused on the RB17's hypercar project. When talking about Adrian Newey and the opportunity to have him work at Aston Martin, Lauren Stroll said, Adrian and I have been talking not only for months, but actually for years. Adrian is clearly the most talented and gifted individual in Formula 1 based on his track record and history. So I'd be very excited for Adrian to join our team, as I think every other team on the grid would feel exactly the same. What many people fail to understand is that the number of resources that have been invested in making Aston Martin what it is right now, or more precisely, what it is about to become in the following years, are astronomical, and this is where the greatness of Lawrence Stroll comes to shine. But if Lawrence wants to see his team win races and championships, there is a scenario which he will likely have to face, and that is the face of his team not being his son which was so certain about being the leader of all of the changes in Aston Martin and the future champion of the sport. What is also very important to note is that Nui is a man who is likely requested to work with the best possible drivers available, so if he's to sign a contract with Aston Martin, he will do anything in his power to lure Verstappen if the Dutchman's feeling unhappy with Red Bull by that time. Of course, a combination of Alonso and Verstappen is much stronger, both on paper and in practice, than the one of Verstappen and Lance Stroll. So, considering that Adrian doesn't have any family connections to the Strolls, this will be the preferred lineup of the Brits' mastermind. It would be safe to assume that all of the other high profile members of Aston Martin would lean towards this lineup too, because they'll be able to extract more data and develop the car in a much more proper direction with Alonso and Verstappen behind it, rather than Stroll, who has been known for his reckless driving that could get emphasized if he's being put under tons of pressure from Max. Right now, Fernando Alonso is a lot closer to ending his F1 career than starting it, and in the middle of his 40s, for him to remain as passionate as he is right now, it would take a very competitive car and a highly respected team of engineers to work with the team he's in. This can be provided by Aston Martin, but on the other hand, the team doesn't want to stop here either. They're pursuing the best of the best, and everything they did so far has laid a perfect basis to lure Verstappen in the first opportunity possible, which might be 2026. Right now, 2025 is likely to remain a status quo year for both Verstappen and Aston Martin, but that doesn't mean the competition on the grid will remain the same. We've seen that the teams have caught up with Red Bull massively, and even before the new regulations kick in, Red Bull would find it very hard to keep their feet on the ground and up to the front, further opening the door for Verstappen's exit, who has been quite unhappy with the development of the RB20 so far. This might not be an issue in Aston Martin, where he'll join forces with a lot of old friends of his, including Nui, Dan Fallows, as well as the entire structure of Honda. We all know how passionate Max speaks about the Japanese manufacturer, and according to the three-time world champion, they played a pivotal role in his maiden championship and the other two that came after it. 
So, to race with them again in his career is something we shouldn't just throw away like an empty thought. It's not just the capacity of the people that could lure Verstappen to Aston Martin, we're talking about the modernity of their facilities. The Silverstone-based squad has a brand new wind tunnel, simulator and factory that will start working from 2025 onwards, and given the fact that Nui was able to work a deal with Red Bull that allowed him to skip the gardening leave for 2025, his input on the new generation of cars will be massive. But as you probably guessed by this point of the video, 3 doesn't go into 2, and it's extremely hard to imagine who Lawrence would drop in order to bring Verstappen. We've seen Ferrari make the choice with ease when it comes to Carlos Sainz and Lewis Hamilton, but here in Aston Martin, the nepotistic relationship between the strolls could complicate the situation to a greater extent. You don't want to drop your son because you've been building the entire project for him, but you also don't want to drop the competitive two-time world champion who can bring you so much value and sponsorship to your team as well. This might be the perfect scenario to Lawrence to have an awkward chat with Lance and demote him to another racing category, because from what the young Canadian driver has been showing on the grid, there are certainly tons of other drivers who would take that car to greater lengths and expectations than himself. We know for a fact that Lawrence is a man who can take tough decisions to keep his business alive, but demoting his son from an F1 seat and admitting that he's not what he pictured him to be in front of the entire world might be a move that we could put in the basket named out of his league. Nonetheless, this is slowly but surely turning into the only opportunity in which Nui will have the presence of Verstappen in his team, because the threat of the three-time world champion being snatched from Mercedes if he chooses to not continue the venture with Red Bull is a very real one, despite Wolf confirming the commitment to Russell and Antonelli from 2025 onwards. If you don't have the best drivers in your team, then you have them racing against you. And time after time in 2025, we've seen that the big difference is made by your driver just as much as the competitiveness of your car, if not in greater extents by your driver. So the saying suffering from success could be something that Lawrence will face from 2026 onwards because all of his successful moves to bring staff like Cowell, Cardial and Nui, as well as investing so much money in Silverstone's facilities, goes to show that you can't have everything in your way and you might be making sacrifices on the way of success. That is, as of now, the only logical solution when it comes to Aston Martin winning races and championships, because to say that Alonso would just give up on the project is definitely an understatement. Not after everything he's gone through with the team's downgrade that turned them again into more or less a backmarker rather than a midfield or competitive team. Of course, Lawrence can always get rid of Alonso and replace him with Verstappen, considering the age of the two-time world champion bodes well with this argument. But this might not be the lineup that his partners and the engineers back in Silverstone would desire, because if you have Nui on your team, rest assured that he would want to work with the creme de la creme of the sport. You can hardly imagine a better duo of drivers than Alonso and Verstappen. So with this in mind, do you think that Lawrence will make the tough decision to get rid of his son and replace him with a three-time world champion? And if so, do you think his team will win the championship sooner rather than later, starting in 2026? Let us know in the comments below.